What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 5, NHL 23, Montreal Canadiens Franchise Mode Series. As always guys, thank you so much for the support on these episodes. If you wouldn't mind dropping a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. Now, as you guys can see, we're currently 4-2 in the preseason. Suzuki there's got 10 points in 6 games. If you missed the last episodes, go check them out. But, as you can see, some bad teams currently winning the Stanley Cups. you got the Ducks, Flames I'm not counting in that, Coyotes, and Buffalo Sabres. Now, we've been a very bad team the past 4 seasons, have not made the playoffs. I'm hoping this year it changes. If it doesn't, I literally don't know what to do. Take a look at this team. I've actually made a change. So we now have plus five on the top three forward lines. It's actually incredible. Ovechkin, Suzuki, Gallagher. Second line there, Caulfield, Larkin, Marchand. Third lines, Benson, Dvorsky, and Kane. Dvorsky, Benson, both rookies. Full slate there of X-Factors. A lot of X-Factors, obviously, on this team. Fourth line there, LaPierre, Bergeron, and Doc. Like, are you kidding me? Uh, defensively here, we got Slavin Sanderson as our new top pair. Alan Drysdale in the second with Gooley Murphy on the bottom pair. Uh, to give you guys an idea how much better this team is, last year, Gooley Murphy was our top D pair. Alan uh, was lower rating. He's gotten, gotten better, but still. Uh, Goaltending-wise, we got Lukanen starting. Most wins in the NHL last season. Alan fell back in him up. In terms of the power play here, we actually get plus five on both power plays. I don't think we've ever had that yet. Uh, rocking all forwards actually on number two there. Four-man power play one plus five. Same with four-man power play two. Obviously, two guys with Ovi. We got him on the left side there in his office. He's the finisher, so I'm hoping he can put up some goals here. Now, in terms of the PK, even though Bergeon's playing fourth line, he's on every single PK. Playing with Marchand there. Uh, PK two. Larkin's also very good defensively, fast. Trading Nietzsche, I think almost one for one. We added like a small prospect. I also got Doc on the PK because he has fourth line, but I want to make sure he gets a decent amount of ice time. Hopefully, he doesn't ruin him too much. Uh, plus five in the first PK as well, so obviously Bergeron's a big part of that. Now, looking at the AHL team next here, guys. First line's kind of nasty. You got this Houston dude we just drafted, 31st in round one, few X factors, 77 on the draft. You don't usually see that late first round for like a non elite player. It's pretty sick, honestly. Playing with Lekromacki, 22, now 80, so a bit of a late bloomer. I'm hoping next year's in the NHL. This Gratton guy here, 2069, medium elite, really good shot. Had like 15 goals, 16 goals, sorry, three assists last year. So we need him to get a few more assists this season. Uh, Zykov, 76 million elite. We just drafted ninth overall. Playing with Zarian Madden. Third line there. Bowers is an 80. Off stop shot. Lavoie, both high 70s. Ronnie, Captain, and Foots on a bad fourth line at all. Defensively, Zellweger, Yormo, Marsh, Kivaharju there still coming along. And the bomb pair is Sobolev and Dragasevic. Dragasevic we traded for 2174. Medium top for potential. AHL goalies, we got Jason Eves, 21-76, medium elite. And backing up, Reimer here is 20 years old, 65, high elite. So, have some really good goalies in the pipeline there. Um, two, if you guys are curious about the captaincy, I don't think it's changed since like two seasons ago. So, Suzuki still wearing the C, Bergeron Gallagher there, both wearing A's. Now, speaking of Gallagher guys, something I want to show you. I don't think we've taken a look at the record book yet. We're about the halfway point here. So, I figured I would give you guys a look. Obviously, Montreal Canadiens, a storied franchise. We're probably never touching any of the all-time records, except for one. That is the seasons there. If you notice, Gallagher's at 14. So if this season be his 15th season, by the 10th and final episode, that'd be his 20th season if he hasn't retired yet. He could tie Jean Beliveau there, which would be pretty incredible. I don't think we're touching any of the other records, in terms of all-time at least. Season records, we could beat some, like 136 points. That'll be tough by Guy Lafleur. Um, 82 assists, that's beatable. Uh, 60 goals, also tough. Um, shutouts, 22. We're not touching that. Wins by Carey Price, 44. I mean, Lucan had 44 wins last year. Rookie records here, definitely beatable. 71 points if we get like a sick player. Uh, Dvorsky or Benson are playing top six. They could actually maybe touch that. And then game records there, I think, you know, are completely locked. But you really never know. Now, before we get started with the sim here, guys, of course, I'll show you the ratings for this year. Definitely the best team we've had yet. So 100 offense, 97 defense, 86 goaltending. Hopefully this is enough to finally have us make the playoffs. If not, like I said, I just don't know. All right, guys, so with the Chris break now, the record of 19, 8, and 4. What's kind of incredible, sometime during November, we had an insane record. Like, we were 11, 4, and 4, something like that. And we were either in a wild card spot or out of the playoffs because our division is insane. The Maple Leafs there at 51. Panthers at 46. We were third place there at 42. Sabres and Bruins, though, are also very good. Like, look at the Metro. The two top teams have 37 points. They're not even in a playoff spot in our division. Like, are you kidding me? If we somehow finish top 10 in the NHL and miss the playoffs, I'll freak out. I'm um, Ovechkin there. Actually, more assists than goals, but 38 and 31. Love seeing that. Raphael Lavoie, surprisingly, leading scorer in the NHL. He's on the third line. Okay, that's interesting. 
Also, too, I should show you guys, AHL team first in their division right now, as well as second in the AHL. Now, the trade deadline's approaching, guys. Washington's offering us facts and a fourth for two seconds. Definitely saying no. Like, our forward group's already so deep. Um, we're looking not bad here, heading towards the trade deadline. Currently in a wild card spot still. Don't like that. Three straight losses. Uh, Prunovic, I mean, I already know what his rating is. Montreal, so we're 34, 17, and 10. 78 points. Like, that's a good record. Our win loss there is like 2 to 1, not including OT losses. And we're fighting for our lives right now for a wild card spot. I guess we have a bit of an edge, but not enough for me. <laughs> like, we've seen how, you know, what was it, two seasons ago? We lost nine straight at the end of the year. Again, we'd be first in the Metro. We'd be first in the Central. Ducks have 92. Oh my gosh. But we'd literally be second best team in the West. We're currently fourth in our division. Like, this is insane. So, clearly the best teams in the league right now are all in the Atlantic, our division. Go figure. Obi there, 66 and 61 with 33 and 33. I love seeing that. HL wise, now Tyler Madden's leading scorer. So, I mean, the team is playing pretty good. I'm honestly not sure. We're full buyer 100%. Um, what I'm looking to add. Really, not a lot of space in terms of the forward depth, especially we have, you know, three lines plus five chemistry. You don't want to ruin that. Defensively, even, like, I don't know, unless it's, you know, upgrading from, like, a Slavin or a Ghoulie, even to an even better, like a true number one defenseman, not a lot out there. So, uh, Meyer, 88, but a big contract. McCann, one year left at 5 million, 88 overall. I mean, for us, he's putting one of the 84 medium leads to the fourth line, so it doesn't really make sense to bring him in. Theodore's not bad, 87, uh, 6.8. Maybe I could see the price on him. Uh, same with Pelic, Provorov there, a little bit more expensive. Olofsson, Jari, Barbanov, up to an 87. How did he grow that much? Uh, Couturier, we already have Bergeron for our two-way guy, Drake Batherson. So, yeah, maybe I'll take a look. I guess Pellet should be a bit better on the PK. He's also cheaper than Didor, both uh, salary and trade value. And look at this guy. They're just checking Gavin McCann out, see how he's playing in junior. He's got a point per game right now. He's a 77. Hopefully, he'll continue to grow. And now looking at our defense here, guys, and I really don't know if it makes sense to bring in Pellet. Like, Drysdale is younger on a cheaper contract, elite potential. Slavin's the same thing, essentially. Um, Allen, younger, basically has a good elite potential. Merkley's great offensively, obviously, for the power play. I mean, look at his offensive stats. He really should do better than he is doing. Like, 95 skating, 5-star puck skills, and shooting. And he's got one goal, 13 assists. Like, I don't know. And he's on the first power play. That just makes no sense to me. I feel like he really should be playing better than he is, but it's fine. Gooley, of course, more defensive, so yeah, I'm not going to trade him either. I want to keep some of the original Montreal core, so basically Gooley, Gallagher, Suzuki, Caulfield. I think that's about all we have left, actually. I guess Doc, too, I kind of forgot about. Low trade value there, probably because they know he's playing on the fourth line, even though he is 85. And like I said, I think he'll bounce back next year. I'm sure we'll lose one of the veterans that are probably going to retire. Now, still could make a trade here, but maybe rather than making a trade that's going to affect the team, like I said, playing well. If it's not broke, don't fix it. There's really no superstar available that makes sense to add. But hopefully, maybe you can find like a prospect or something that uh, can take advantage of some team having on the block. All right, guys. So like I was saying, I'm looking around for prospects, and I see the Rangers have this Burry guy on the block. Obviously, big fan of the last name there. I loved Pavel Burry as a kid. You can see here, he's 60 overall, still at 21 years old. So pretty low rated. He was a third round pick, mealy potential. I feel like they're probably not playing him enough because they're not playing him at all. Uh, which is going to ruin him. So if I can get him over, playing the AHL could help him out. Offering our first round pick because I doubt we get a medium league prospect with it. Also Odette here, 1867, medium top six. Actually, he's kind of good. Maybe I don't want to trade Odette. Instead here, I'm going to offer up Sharpenshay, 1965, medium top four. He could end up being decent, but I mean, medium league prospect. I think it's worth the trade. Rejected, okay. Honestly, the fact that he's still at 60 at 21, that's what's the way to offer. And I got to show you guys something. Edmonton 16 41 and 6. I don't know what's going on over there. They got McDavid and Dry Saddle, and they're not doing good at all. So, if you guys forget, we had the Oilers first round pick, which looking like a good chance to be first overall. We traded to Edmonton, though, in the Sanderson trades. Now, got a ton of value. We really got to win a cup to make sure that, you know, that doesn't matter. Sanderson's a big part of a cup run. Now, a couple hours left in the deadline. I was looking around, guys. Crosby here on the block for the Red Wings, and I feel like we have to go save him. Because they've had him scratched all year. 82 overall, he's their ninth best forward. He had 70 points a season ago, and they just have him scratched. 73, 80, 95. Like, I don't understand that one at all. Now, I gotta retain 50% on Crosby, make sure this trade goes through. So, we'll probably have to add a little bit extra, although he is on the block, so it shouldn't be too much. I'm thinking, honestly, he'll probably just replace LaPierre on the fourth line, but 
I'm still gonna hold on to Pierre because we got him signed under K for the next six years. He's 25, so might as well keep him for that bomb six roll. Um, I'm thinking Trevor and Shaker, we're gonna trade. They like our debt. I mean, he looks pretty good. We could give up Rupp instead, low elite. I mean, we have a lot of good defensemen. Let's do this. Uh, the value is pretty equal. Let's see if they say yes. Trades rejected. Okay, I feel like we're probably not too far off. Second round pick here with those two. Are you kidding me? They still say no. A second and a fourth the year after? Come on. There we go. Okay, so I think Crosby's favorite team was the Cares Montreal. I'm not positive on that as I know his favorite player was Iserman, but I don't know if his favorite team was the Red Wings. I feel like it was Montreal, but he liked Iserman. So Crosby's on the team now, guys. We've got so much veteran experience with the young players. Of course, all the veterans, for the most part, have good poise, which you need in the playoffs. Also, a lot of X-Factors to help with the chemistry. Like, hopefully we can go on a run here. And the trade deadline's now complete, guys. So, kind of funny, I think. Our quietest trade deadline ever, and we traded for Sidney Crosby. Uh, let's see, Sebastian Ajo, the defenseman, goes to Boston with Rem Pitlick. Uh, Kill Thomas there to Buffalo for a first-round pick. He must be pretty high-rated now. First-round pick for the Predators for Cody Glass, who's going to Columbus. Zach Hyman to LA, Cal Foot to the Blues. Travis Sandheim to the Flames. A lot of picks being moved. Brett Pesci to Florida for a first. Or sorry, the first is actually from Adam Pellich, who's going to Toronto. Interesting. Ivan Barbashev there to the Avalanche. Of course, we had on our team last year. Elias Anderson to the Penguins. Nicholas Hague to the Oilers. Why are the Oilers adding if they're doing so bad? Um, let's see. Stevenson there goes to Vegas. Yeah, they gave up picks. And Stevenson, you get Hague. Weird. Tolvanen to the Blackhawks. Fial to the Dallas Stars. That's a pretty big trade, but... I would say based on name, even though he's not as high rate anymore, we definitely made the biggest trade of the deadline with getting Crosby. And after that trade for Crosby, guys, here's an update look at the lines. Like I was saying, he's just filling in for LaPierre there on the fourth line left wing with Bergeron and Doc. I mean, that's got to be best fourth line in hockey. Crosby still has insane defensive stats too, so kind of perfect for the fourth line, like 93D awareness. Not very physical or fast, but uh, senses there also is insane still. 97 poise, 92 offensive awareness, decent shot, decent hands. So I'm actually just kind of using him on the special teams, kind of like a special team specialist, if you will. He's got the big tipper X Factor. He's out front there on the second power play. Um, I don't know if he's on the four man. He actually is out front on the second four man. He's also on the PK with Bergeron gets us plus five on the first, and then Marchand Larkin get plus five on the second. So both PKs now plus five. He's also on the uh, three man PK two. So either he's fourth line, he's going to be getting you know a decent amount of ice time there. Uh, speaking of ice time too, I'm trying to up Grand's ice time. I did a double check on the AHL power play. Somehow he wasn't on either, even though he's like a really good, you know, meme lead sniper. So he's on the second one now. Hopefully it gives him more ice time. Hopefully he'll produce more than, of course, go up in rating. So I don't know, guys. I feel like we've done kind of everything we can. Now it's in the hands of the EA Sim Gods, and hopefully they're nice to us. And we're now through the season here, guys. Record of 46, 25, and 11. So finally, it took us five seasons. In our fifth season here in the playoffs, second there in the division with 103 points, we'll be playing the Bruins in the first round. How fitting is that? Bergeron, Marchand get to go up against their old team. AHL team at 50 wins on the year, 51-18-2, 104 points. Um, Roadrunners 111, even the goals there 105. So first in our division as well as the conference, but uh, we get third place there in the entire league. AHL scoring, Lekkermacki, ooh, not that many points, 54, but you know it is the team lead at least. And then Ovechkin there, team lead for us, 86 with 45 goals. Still at his age, putting up over a point per game. Very impressive. How old is he now? 41, geez. Uh, Suzuki there, close to a point per game. Definitely benefited from playing with Ovechkin. Yeah, 64 assists. He's got 95 passing, tape to tape, third eye. So you'd expect that. I feel like he definitely probably should be a 2A forward, not a playmaker, but that's all right. Uh, Dylan Lurkin there, big year for him, 72. Kane, 67, playing third line in power play. That ain't bad at all. Maybe you should actually push him up a bit because... Gallagher getting first line minutes only at 55. I'm thinking for the playoffs we move Kane to the first line. Uh, Caulfield 66, Marchand 60 still. Sanderson almost 60 as a D-man with a plus 30. Not bad at all. Benson 42 is rookie year. Dvorsky 40. So they both did solid. Dry still 34 is not bad. Bergeron 30. Let's see. Crosby came in. 12 points, 21 games. Only you know 12 minutes a night there or so there. Not too bad. Lucan in here. First year with us. 0.905, 2.72. I mean... Not great numbers, but they're good enough. Like, it's what I'm looking for just to be competitive. Um, after Lekromacki, you got Lavoie, Madden, Houston, Bowers, all 50 plus. Zeri's there, 44. Where Kibahardu, 30. Tyronning, 28. Grattan here, 27, 15 goals, 12 assists. Okay, so I think he actually started to score a little bit more once we put him on the power play. Go figure, right? 
Eves here at 0.912 and a 2.18. Ryan were almost exact same stats. Actually, slightly better save percentage. Okay, I feel like he's at 77 now. Wow. Both these goalies should be getting a lot better. Uh, next year, guys, we'll take a look at the entire league, though. I feel like OV's 45 goals probably isn't good enough for Misha Shard. You never know, though. Kucherov, 103 on the year. McKinnon, 102. Matthews, 100. Uh, he's not even on the first page. Bedard there, 96. Now at 94. Malkin still going at 40. Robertson, Debrinkit, Forsberg. Uh, Kucherov did the most goals. Ovechkin, though, is fifth, which isn't too bad. We'll take that. Defensive scoring here, Adam Fox first there with 70 points. Now taking a look at goalies, John Gibson had the most wins. Lukanen was only third, 40, so that's not too bad. Uh, save percentage here for a starter, Wallstead, 0.92. And then goals against also Wall. Actually, no, Gibson there, 2.35. And he's still only an 85 right now. Wallstead there up to a 90. And then we'll take a look at rookie skaters. I, unless it's a bad class, probably don't have a chance. Ethan Gothe, of all people, wasn't he on our team? Unless I'm thinking of somebody else. First round pick by the Sabres 2023. No, okay. I think I'm thinking of somebody else. But he looks like some guy we traded. Leo Carlson, 57. Gordon there. Uh, you can see our two guys, Zachary Benson, Dvorsky. Both made the first page. But I uh, do not see them winning a Calder, unfortunately. Quentin Musty there, 42. Now taking a look here, guys, at the entire league standing. So the Ducks have the presence there with 112. Now we finished fourth in the entire NHL, which isn't too bad for our first time making the playoffs. Five teams there with 100 plus points. Florida gets screwed. 10th in the NHL and they miss. That's what I said I did not want to happen to us. Seattle then gets in at 21. The four teams above them all miss. They only had 83 points. The Pacific Division was just absolutely terrible. And Edmonton's got the best odds at number one. 57. It's like the game knew I traded away the, their first round pick. Are you kidding me? Uh, Toronto there most goals four. We were only four back though. Rangers third highest scoring team in the league and they missed the playoffs. Um, goals against here. I don't oh, actually okay we weren't too bad we were the seventh you know best there in terms of goals again so yeah overall definitely a good season for us you cannot complain with how the guys played I feel like we have a good mix of veterans and rookies like I said before we get started here at the playoffs Kane's getting promoted here to the first line five five three that's still not bad at all um, again he just put up more points than Gallagher and less ice time during the season that just makes sense to me so we'll get started here guys with round one against the Boston Bruins Bergeron, Marchand, like I said, get to play their old team. No idea what that Boston team even looks like. It's been, you know, so long since I looked at the lines. Caprizov's on that team now. That's right. He signed with them over us. Callum Ritchie's first line center. Mitch Marner. Okay, Marner, Caprizov's a nasty, like, duo on the first line. Milano, Michael Misa they drafted as well. Connor Brown. Okay, Boston's kind of sick. Garland, Dampus, uh, Seneca was an 85. Rodriguez, Monaghan, Pitlick. So a couple foreign players of ours there on the fourth line, Monaghan and Pitlick. Defensively, they got Lindholm, Logan Mayu on the top pair, who actually traded away for like a fourth round pick. He's a 79. 92 McAvoy on the second pair. Okay, with 81 Clef Bomb, 79 Aho, 79 Stillman. All right, I don't know what the McAvoy on the second pair. 90 Swayman. Okay, Lennox as well. Okay, so they got like four foreign players of ours. And so, like I was saying, guys, here we go. First time in the playoffs. First two games are at home in the Bell Center, Montreal. 5-4 OT win, 3-1 win, let's go. Original six matchup, rivalry matchup. And we go to Boston and win both games. That was a good team too. We sweep them round one, let's go. These guys have been waiting for that playoff action for a while. At least, you know, the, the guys that have been on the team. I mean, some of the guys I'm sure have made the playoffs before. The rookies, this is only their first season. Tampa Bay Lightning here up next. Obi's got seven there in four games. Brandon Hale's up to an 87, now playing first line with Braden Point and Kucherov. Kucherov, of course, just won the Art Ross Trophy with 103 points. Uh, they got Zucker there on the second line with Stammer, still 85. Sorelli, 87. Uh, Tanev, love the pick. Dickinson, Veselainen, Geeky, Paul, Liam Kirk. Defensively here, they got Hedman, who's still a 90, which is kind of crazy. Um, Hedman keeps his rating. It happened last year, too, um, up until, like, you know, the mid-30s, late-30s, whereas Yossi's rating always tanks, and I don't know why. They both have, like, highly potential or whatever it is. They're similar-aged. Just one of those things. Look out for it if you're playing franchise. Be warned if you trade for Yossi. I think I'm playing the top pair there with Chernak, Bal, and Surdichev's the second pair. Jones and Minkinen on the bottom pair. Goalie, I figured, yeah, Vasilevsky's still on net. 93 overall, still at 32 years old. So uh, that's one, you, again, you know you can trade for Vasilevsky. He'll keep his rating. So round two gear, guys. Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's see how we fare. They actually have home ice advantage. Head to Tampa. Win one and another OT loss. Both one-goal games. I will take that. Head home now to Montreal. 7-3 win. 
4-3 loss. Okay, I'm still not upset. Both losses, one goal games. Game 5 in Tampa, 5-2 win. Let's go. Game 6 at home. Oh my gosh, wow. We're playing these guys so tight. Like, every time they've beaten us, has been by one. Twice was in overtime. Game 7, do or die. To make it to the conference final, here we go. That's not good. Down 2, Sertichev, Kucherov. 4-2. to two. We do get the two goals we need, unfortunately. They also get two. You never know. You never know. Third period, we need a hero. Oh, are you kidding me? Suzuki Gallagher tie the game with five minutes to go. Brandon Hagel with the game winner. <sighs> That's heartbreaking. Also, too, guys, just check the AHL team. We lost in the first round there in five. I feel like we play Cleveland Monsters every single year, it seems. And I will say, honestly, it sucks losing, but for it being the first time we made the playoffs, round two going seven with Tampa, we cannot be too upset. Um, I will say, though, and we lose the eventual Stanley Cup winner. So, yeah, I mean, nothing to be... And our HL team loses the eventual Calder Cup champ. So we ran into the champs in both leagues. Uh, what I was going to say is the only thing that does kind of suck, I'm sure we're going to lose a veteran, uh, whoever, whoever it is. Okay, thank God. Edmonton drops to three, so they're not going to get the first overall pick if there is like a franchise player. Washington two, San Jose one with Ottawa there via Edmonton, which is via us. It would be cool if it shows like, you know, multiple vias um, to see kind of all the trades that happen. Detroit there four also drops. So. Uh, we'll take a look, guys, at the awards for this year. And then, of course, after that, retired players. Ovi, 17 points in 11 playoff games. I mean, he was trying his best to win us another Stanley Cup. Suzuki there, 15. So both those guys are going off. Marshan's close to a point per game. I mean, it seems like most of these guys. Crosby, three, but he's fourth line. We really can't be too upset. Goaltending, Lukanen, under 900. I mean, it's not acceptable. Allen Felt's numbers were insane. He only played one game, and he probably just, you know, came in there late. But played really well in the game he did come in for. So, uh, looking at the playoff tree, let's see. After Tampa Bay beat us in 7, they beat the Leafs in 5, and then the Wild in 5. Alright, so I think we have their toughest test, which is a good sign, you know, for our future here. Um, Ducks their presence trophy after Buffalo won it back-to-back. -back. Individual here, like I said, Kucherov, Art Ross. Bedard, though, gets the Hart trophy. Pretty cool. Dalene, James Norris. Well, big year for Buffalo. Bedard also got Lady Bing. Back-to-back -back years, he's a new Goudreau. Uh, Gordon there on Nashville, Calder Trophy. Kucherov also got the Conn Smythe. Wallstead got the Vesna, along with the Liam Jennings. Edmonton, Bill Masterton. Snyder there got the Jack Adams. Barkov, Selkie. Bedard, Ted Lindsay. And then Kucherov there, Maurice Richard. Now, AHL-wise, like I said, we won the regular season Eastern Conference this year, which means we also won our division. I doubt we got any player awards, though. Like, our guys are pretty low scoring. Uh, Tropchenko, that <laughs> funny name. He had the most points, MVP. They just wanted me to say his name again. Fisher, their most goals. Erat, best rookie. Schmidt, their best defenseman. Oh, Eves, best goaltender. Okay. Immediately potential win best goalie. I mean, maybe he'll be a future, you know, elite goalie in the NHL. Yanni Gordon, MVP of the playoffs. Well, that's funny. Seeing some of those guys in the AHL. Nimala there, sport or community involvement, sorry. And then James Reimer, lowest goals against. All right. So, like I said, we got a lot of veterans on the team. Uh, on the retirement page, I feel like somebody's going to be here. Oh my god. <laughs> we lost two legends, both retiring with us, Alex Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby. It's kind of crazy, like, in real life when Ovi's 41, Crosby's 39, is Crosby going to be that much worse than Ovi? Like, Ovi's an 87 still, and Crosby's a 78? I doubt it. Although, when I started to check this podcast, Crosby did just say how he thinks he'll play for probably three more years. It was kind of crazy to think about, honestly. Like, I remember when he joined the league as a rookie, and he might retire in three years. Uh, Backstrom as well, retires with his boy Ovechkin, even though they're on different teams now. That's so funny to see those two on Montreal. Um, I should just point out too, Ovi there, 1,038 goals, obviously crushes Gretzky's goal record. Uh, both these guys, I think, are top five, if not for sure, top 10 uh, points all time. Pavelski there, Jonathan Tays, Corey Perry. I mean, David Krejci was on our team for a little bit there. Uh, some big names retiring, JVR, Derek Broussard. I mean, obviously, Crosby will be retiring together. I think it's pretty cool. If that happened in real life, uh, that'd be, I think, awesome. Fleury retires as well. Fleury wanted to retire with his buddy there in Sid. Baxter retired with his buddy in Ovi. Pretty cool. So, uh, we'll get to the draft now. Following players are now coaches. Pavelski, Tanev, no Crosby coach, no Ovi coach. That kind of sucks. It's cool when you can hire one of those two. It's so like I was saying, guys, heading into the draft now. Curious to see the draft class. Is there a franchise guy? There is. Austin Lorenz. Wow, so if, if Otto would have got the first overall pick with, because of our trade, like I said, I'd have been so upset. Uh, just some medium elites there. Let's check potentials. 
Um, 18, or actually I guess it'd be our scouts, 23 central scouts. Think there's a medium elite. I'm gonna check gems here as well. Clausen guaranteed uh, medium top four gem, 45. Okay, I think we still have our second round pick. So maybe we could get him. Honestly, this guy here could be a steal. Lane Fratton, ranked like 250, guaranteed low elite. And so next year, guys, I'm actually trying to move up in the draft. I made a mistake. We still have our first round pick, not our second rounder. So I wanna get that guy I was talking about who could be medium elite. Want to go from 25 to 18 just to make sure we get him. We only have a third and a seventh after that, so we really cannot give up um, any picks. I guess we could give up, you know, future picks. I'm um, looking at some players here. I don't know. Um, Bergeron, Marchand, we're going to bring him back, probably. Uh, Nolan Foote, they like. Madden Bowers, they're both 27. I mean, they're completely done. Just throw these guys into the trade. Maybe that just pushes it over. Seven spots. Trades rejected. Okay, I kind of figured that. Alan Flood here is expiring. I think Eve is going to be our backup next year. Lucan actually went up to an 87. Maybe we can combine him with like a third 2029, 20, fourth 2030. I really just want to get this prospect. Who, I mean, watch. We want to be medium elite. They say yes. Okay, so a lot to give up there. If he's medium elite, though, it's worth it. Simdor pick. Looks like he's still there. Uh, yeah, Berg for our scouts had him at 18, so I wasn't sure I wanted to be safe. And 64 medium top four. So we gave up quite a bit there. But uh, actually, 75 D awareness at 18. Shot block, stick check aren't too bad. He looks like he should end up being an NHLer. And so now, guys, saving to pick 70 here, being in the third round. Um, guarantee medium top nines. I'd rather just go for something better that's riskier, like Carlson. Come on, be immediately goalie. 59 medium starter, not terrible. And our next pick now is until the seventh round, as I mentioned. There's not a whole lot of picks in this draft. Um, Pins, we still got three left. Guaranteed a uh, little lead there in Fratton. So we'll take him. Could take a chance on the other two if we wanted as well. If you just get some late sevens. Uh, 50 overall low elite. <laughs> Pretty low rated, but still not bad. And you know what I just realized, guys? Ryan Merkley here on expiring contract. 85 overall, but 21 points last year. 82 games with his stats. Makes no sense. So he's going on a big raise, I'm sure, because of his rating. I don't want to pay him that. If we can get a couple sevens here from the Coyotes, plus a second next year, it's a good deal for us for a guy I'm probably letting go anyways. There we go. Trades accepted. So we can get those two guys we're looking at. Plus now next year, our draft actually looks pretty decent with four picks in the first three rounds. So with our next pick here, I'm going to take uh, Yuntinen. 58 low top six. I mean, they're late sevens. It's not terrible. And then this guy here, one of the lower ranked guys I've ever seen, uh, Sreda, low top six. Although actually, rather than him, I did just see somebody ranked higher. Could be low elite. Matten in here. Take a chance and low bomb six. So obviously guys, that draft was not as good as our last year's draft, but that's okay, because we actually made the playoffs this year. We were literally one game away from Eastern Conference Final. And throughout the resign phase, guys, a $36 million in gap space. I feel like every summer we have tons of money. Uh, both Lorcan and Sanderson jumped from 89 to 90, I believe, which is cool to see. Caulfield now in 88, Allen 87. Uh, we'll definitely probably try to extend him before next season starts. He's looking Really, really good, like a legit top pairing D-man. Um, let's see, Benson's 85, same with Dvorsky now. Gallagher's gone down to 84, I'm definitely keeping him though, trying to break that record. I mean, okay, he doesn't really get cheaper on a long term, so I'll just do the one year, because I feel like he'll probably keep asking for less and less as his rating drops. 3.75, I think, is fair for Gallagher. Patrick Kane put up points last year. Um, he'll definitely play top six again. See if he does like 4.5. I'm curious to see. So Marchand's an 81 now. Still wants five and a half million because he produced last year. Okay. Um, like we could do it. As I mentioned, uh, Bowers, man, I'm just letting go. Lekermacki, obviously keeping a medium elite guy. Could we get to him signed long term if he starts to grow? Wow. Okay. So get signed up for the rest of this thing for a million bucks or a million 1.1. I think you can bury all that in the AHL. So if he takes off at all, we're good. Bergeron to 79, what's 1.5? Uh, I mean, I'll do it. Fourth line centers, locked down with him. McKenna jumps, he's in NHL this year, so give him a contract, we'll see what happens. And I'll get a goalies, like I said, ease, I think, probably back up next year. If he jumps enough, could even be the starter over Lukanen. Uh, so definitely not signing an NHL goalie. Could use an AHL backup though, I'm assuming Reimer will be like in the 70s. Bergeron wants more money, same with Kane. Gallagher said yes. McKenna said yes. Lecker Mackey. Kane actually complained about the minutes he got last year. But like, come on. Do you see the players he was playing with? Marchand, he's been on the team for so long. I'll do like a one year, five mil. 
Seems like he's not gonna say yes, even though we've actually like started to have some success. And Bergeron, I'll do one year. I'll do 1.5. I'll give him extra to make it a one year. There you go. Bergeron's coming back. I'd love to win a cup with him on Montreal. Marchand still wants more money. Same with Kane. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of signing the veterans, but I think just kind of for fun. Uh, we'll try and bring them back. We'll give them basically what they're asking. Wow. Kane still just hard pressed on. He didn't get the minutes last year. Like, I get it, dude. <laughs> I mean, I did end up putting him on the first line for the playoffs, though. You should remember that. And finally, he says yes. So, we still have 23 million cap space. And if you guys remember, Makar might be a free agent. If he is, we're going to go hard after him because we actually do need um, one defenseman. Zellweger could be a top six. His role is top six. 80 overall, 23. So, if it's not like Makar or somebody crazy, I'm definitely fine with Zellweger on the bottom pair. I also just signed this Dominic Yip guy, Grinder, 76 medium elite. And you know I just realized, guys, I've only got 35 of 50 contracts. I did trade away, like, a few people at the draft, but I was probably no higher than 40, which is kind of dumb. Like, you might as well sign close to the max, give yourself a little bit of wiggle room with, like, one or two player spots. But other than that, you're just kind of, you know, leaving assets on the floor. So uh, this summer, I'll definitely be signing, you know, at least 10 players. Speaking of that, guys, we're not free agency. Please, Kale McCarr, please. <sighs> I mean, there's this Scroder guy available. 2190s in RFA. Artemi Panarin's there. I mean, that'd be kind of insane. Let's see, Fantilli, also RFA. Panarin's the number one guy. Michkov there, RFA. Sale, Jared McCann, who's on the trade block. Andrew Kopp's there. This guy named Standard. Samuel Gerrard, 87 for 10.2 does not make sense. We've already got so many uh, 87s. They're on better deals. Marco Casper, RFA. I mean, we have the money. We could go after our tiny Panarin. Wait a minute, did I just see that right? Morgan Frost, 85, 2.9. He's a pretty good player. Uh, only played 20 games last year, 5 points. He hasn't produced much, though. Um, weird. What I'm thinking, though, is we could... He's the same rating as Doc. Um, I feel bad trading another Montreal Canadian. But, like, we could get him, trade Doc, and then just have extra money. Defensive awareness is 85. Physical's not bad. I don't know. Might just wait, actually. Now, we have the money this year, guys. I'm not sure next year if we will, so I'm going to say screw it. Let's try and get Panarin. One year... 13 mil. Uh, I was asking for like 12 something on a two year. See what he says. Goaltending wise, Jamie Swayman. Oh my gosh, I think I kind of have to do this. 28.91. Last year's stats by 913, 2.74. Dude is a beast. Got a couple X factors there. So, you know what, guys? We can afford him. And Lukanen was pretty average last year. You got five Stevens left. Let's go. You know what? Who cares? Six is what he wants. I mean, he's a really good goalie. I'll do 875. For a 91, he's 28. Still quite young. Now looking at two-way players, I didn't mention we could use an AHL goalie. Ideally a backup though, so the high elite gets more ice time. Pius Leninen makes a lot of sense. 22-73 medium starter. Maybe he gets up to like a high 70, low 80. Uh, we'll do like three years on him, 850k. And this is also banking on like, of course, our high elite actually gaining rating to be higher rated than him. And so now looking at two-way players, no way. Oh, I ran off in an RFA. I was going to say, Zachary Leroux, 24-77. Medium top six, that's an easy sign. We'll do two years there, 950. I mean, Matthew Petrov, 24-74. Sixth round pick, he's not terrible. 1958, low top six, Kobasu. Just a decent prospect. Leo Loof, 25-79, medium top four. If Zelliger's in the NHL this year, this guy could help us out in the AHL. Stanislav Swazel here, also looks pretty solid. 88 D awareness, 89 stick check. 24-78, low top four D. Um, yeah, I'll give him a contract as well. Bolette here, 21, already a 71 grinder, medium top nine. This guy could be a future fourth liner for us. Now, Sasha Basujov here, 23, 76, medium top nine. He's got some pretty decent offensive stats. I feel like real life, he's probably a little bit better than that. Um, we could give him like a three-year deal minimum, see what he says. Theodore Nierbeck here as well, isn't too bad. 25, 77, playmaker, really good uh, playmaking stats, powerful shot. Not too accurate. I'll sign him. Like I said, we just got, you know, so many roster spots available. Also, two guys, Joshua Waugh here, drafted by Montreal Canadiens 2021. I think we traded him away. I'll bring him back. And this guy here doesn't look too bad. Parrish, 20 years old, sunny overall sniper. 85 accuracy at 20 with decent hands. Again, just going to try, you know, giving a few guys contracts and see what happens. And I just saw Philip Deneau's available, guys. We could bring him back to Montreal. I know he's good friends with Cole Caulfield. 34 years old, 84 overall. I mean, if he's our third line center, him and Bergeron with the PKs, we are set. I'll give him a two year, 5.25, which is definitely too much for him, but 
we're doing it, you know, for the boys on the team, essentially. Um, who is this guy? Tristan Leno, 2379, 90 D awareness. Uh, thank you very much. If he's not an RFA, I actually haven't looked at that yet. He's not, okay. I also see Berkeley Good Rose available, 3481, 1.8 million grinder. Pretty good physical. I feel like he'd honestly be a good fit on the fourth line, just the way the game works. We'll see if we'll take 175 for one. All right, guys, so this Kobasu guy said yes. Uh, Nachushkin for Dragasevic Audet. How good is Nachushkin? Also, too, can we afford that salary and still get Panarin? He's 86 overall, two way forward. Was he last year at 53 points? Uh, forward line four, I'm sure he can play PK. Wow. Okay, so Dragasevic, 2276, medium top four, Audet. 1868 medium top six had a good year in junior uh i think it's tough to say no to nichushkin three years left at six million that's paying him till he's 35 the guy that kind of does it all i feel like he's almost the perfect like third liner on our stack team you know what we're a playoff team now i'm gonna say yes hopefully i don't regret that one Deneau's coming back too oh my god we could have a third line of like doc Dano, nichushkin goodrell on the fourth line with bergeron Harris there said yes, one of the two-way guys, same with Pastujov, Leno, Leheru, Joshua Wass, Fazel, a lot of guys were, like I said, signing some guys here. Lennon in the uh, AHL backup, Valette, waiting here back from Panarin. Let me just double check we got the money. If not, I'll trade someone. Yeah, we have 13.2. I think I offered him 12.5 or 13 right on. Swayman, I decided to sign through team, but you no longer have the cap space for me. That's right, I made an offer on Swayman. Panarin says yes, though. Okay, uh, we got the top dog in free agency. Yeah, Swayman's still there. Could trade Lukanen. He is still there. Okay. Could trade Lukanen, Doc. Make some calf space and go after him. So right here, guys, I'm trying to trade Kirby, Doc, the Red Wings. Unfortunately, like, it's not his fault. <laughs> we put him on the fourth line. He dropped in rating. He's making 5.75 now for the next three years. So then I trade him to Iserman's team. Hopefully it doesn't grill him too hard about whether or not he smokes weed. Iserman in uh, Detroit grilled me. Sits down. So I heard you smoke weed. Like, no, I, huh. I, I really don't. And he's like, okay, questions go on. So are you sure you don't smoke any pot? Because I had some of your teammates tell me you smoke weed. Uh, Crystal there, we're getting back. It's actually a solid prospect, 2279, medium top six. Really good passer, 44 assists last year. Uh, Ryan is sixth to make the value equal. They want both things. Trades rejected too far off. We do have a couple fourths in 2029. Could give them our fourth. Still rejected. At a seventh as well this year. There we go. Okay, so clear cap, bring in a decent prospect. And now we're just banking on being able to sign Swayman, but to make sure we have the money to make sure we don't miss. Uh, I trade Lucan in here, especially since the one guy we have coming up could be better. So that's the thing. We signed Swayman. We're going to have to probably trade him once our young goalie gets good, but he'll have more value than Lucan. So yeah, I think it still makes sense. And so right now, guys, I'm trying to trade Lucan to the Oilers to get their second round pick 2029, fifth rounder next year. I figure if they're still bad, the second's not bad. Obviously, too, we're just kind of shutting cap here. They say no. Could just do it one for one. I don't know if they'll still be bad, but I mean, they're pretty terrible this season. Wow, just a bit low for us. Lucan in. It's like they know our plan to go sign Swayman. Okay, a lot of seventh. That gets it done. So we have to sign Swayman now. Although, if not, we do have a 79 medium elite, which literally isn't the end of the world. So, uh, how much cap space? 10.4. Swayman wants 8.5. Six years. I think I offered him 875. He said yes. No other teams are interested right now. So maybe does it make sense to try and be cheap 250k? I don't think so. So we'll just give him 875 there for six years. Hopefully make sure we still get him. Columbus offering us Roslovich Lowry. We already have honestly more than enough forwards. I'm looking at it like somebody decent's not making the NHL team. Uh probably just you know be based on the chemistry. And there you go, Jeremy Swayman joins the team. So we should be pretty sick for next year. All right, guys, so let's start our next season. We had an extra forward, so I'm going to trade good row here to the Vegas Golden Knights. He honestly didn't give us a boost in chemistry. You guys will see why. I'm uh, going to see if they'll give us a third-down pick for him. They say no. I thought that was a pretty fair ask. What about... Uh, we'll do Edmonton's fourth, because I'll be high, hopefully, in a seventh. There we go. Okay, so we actually have some picks now in this draft, you guys can see. Uh, before, it was only early picks. So, the reason uh, good row does not help out our chemistry... <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have plus five in every single line. I can't believe this wasn't really my plan. Just gonna happen that way. So we've got Panarin, Suzuki, and Coughlin in the first line. Nasty. Kane, Lurkin, Benson on the second. 
Marchand, Dvorsky, Gallagher on the third, and then we have Nichushkin, Bergeron, and Deneau on the fourth. You know, in Bergeron, I plan to be on the fourth line, even though Bergeron's now 78, it's fine. Nichushkin, he has to be there for the plus five. Um, you can see Gallagher, it's a plus three. So he's going to go down in rating, but honestly, to have every line being plus five, I think it's pretty cool. It's worth it. He'll be on PKs and stuff too. Defensively here, Sanderson, Allen, top pair, get a plus one. Allen's down 88. Dude looks like a beast. We'll definitely extend him start next season. Dreisel, Slavin, second pair is also very solid. Like that top four as a whole is great. Then Gooley, Zellweger, I think it's an awesome uh, bottom pair. Zellweger too offensive, so I think he pairs up well with Gooley, who's more defensive. Then goaltending wise, we've got Swayman, one of the best you know, goalies in the league right now. 91 overall with ease here backing him up. 81, medium elite. I feel like this NHL team has to be one of the best in the league. Like, come on, how is anyone matching up with us? So many good young players on entry level deals still. AHL wise, Grand's on the first line now with McKenna and Lekkermacki. So McKenna's actually in the AHL. Really, he should be going back to junior. He's 19, but uh, whatever. 78 overall there, medium elite. I'm not going to call him up to the NHL until we definitely need him. Looks to have a very powerful but weak shot, which is interesting, with some sick hands, and he's fast. Uh, second line, this crystal guy we traded for is down 81. Sniper there, but he's got really good passing. He's playing with Zyka, who's medium elite, as well as Houston there, who had a decent season last year. 52 points in his AHL rookie year. Didn't grow in rating at all, maybe because he started out too high. Yep, here's the 78 uh, medium elite grinder on the third line there with LaPierre and Zeri. I kind of feel bad for LaPierre, but like we just have so much depth. Obviously, McKenna's going to get the first line roll. Uh, fourth line even, Lavoie, Holuru, and Ostapchuk, like, sick HL fourth line, that could be an HL fourth line. Uh, defensively, Luf, Marsh, Yermo, Kibaharju, Svozel, and Leno, all high 70s. Goaltending here, Reimer's now a 75, so that worked out well, he is the starter. 20 years old, high league potential, hopefully ends up being sick. And then, uh, Lennon in there, backing him up, 23-73, medium starter, isn't too bad either. So, yeah guys, this team, <laughs> I mean, come on. That NHL team, they're looking so, so sick. I'm really curious to see, honestly, uh, what our ratings are. They're telling us I shouldn't have traded Goudreau, but, I mean, I don't care. So, we should still have 100 offense for sure. Defensively, I don't know. And then goaltending rating will definitely be higher than last year as well, with Swayman as the starter. So, let's find out here what our ratings will be for the sixth season. Wow, okay, we got 99 offense, so it's actually gone down by one. But 95 defense, 90 goaltending. We, like I said, we better be a Stanley Cup contender like next year with this roster. Like, we are stacked top to bottom. That's going to do it, though, for this episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.